Welcome to another HASS Assistant video. Today I'll be talking about Alexa actionable notifications in Home Assistant. The solution currently available from Keaton Taylor works great. However, I wanted an easier solution to this integration, preventing the need for navigating around the Alexa developer console. If you've never used it before, it can get confusing real quick. If you've never heard of Alexa actionable notifications before, this feature enables Alexa to provide alerts for your Home Assistant setup and take user-directed actions based on these notifications. In this example here, Alexa asks the user if they want to adjust the lighting. Based on the answer, Alexa will give a reply and then the Home Assistant action will happen afterwards. In this case, the lighting will probably be dimmed using a scene created in Home Assistant. Another example, a temperature sensor would act as a trigger if a room got too hot, Alexa would ask if the thermostat should be adjusted. And again, based on the answer, we could have the thermostat adjusted as required. Before grabbing this GitHub repo, there's a few bits we need to have in place. Firstly, you'll need an Alexa developer account, which you can set up with this link. You'll need PowerShell ready to use on a Windows PC to run the scripts. We'll need to grab an access token from Home Assistant. You need to have the Alexa Media Player custom component set up on your Home Assistant. Use this link for more information. And finally, you'll need to have external access to your Home Assistant. If you haven't already, you can check out my video on how to register a domain to your Home Assistant setup using Cloudflare. I already have an Alexa dev account, so the first thing I'm going to do is go back to Home Assistant and grab a long-lived access token. This can be done from the user profile page. Right down at the bottom, click on create, give your token a name, and then just hit OK. Remember to take note of this token, as this will be the only time you have access to view it. So here I'm just going to highlight all the text, right click it and copy it, and we can just store it somewhere, maybe in a notepad for later use. So going back to our checklist on GitHub, the next item is Alexa Media Player from Hacks. So I'm just going to go to my Devices and Services page back on Home Assistant and make sure I have the Alexa Media Player integration installed and configured to work with my Alexa Echo devices. So you can see here I've got four devices ready to use, one of which is the Kitchen Echo and the other one is a Loft Echo. And then the final prerequisite is to ensure you have external access to Home Assistant, which I have using Cloudflare tied in with my custom domain name. Moving on to the five steps to set this project up, first we need to grab the contents of this GitHub repo so it's ready to use on our PC. Click on the green code button and select download zip. And all I've done is move the zip file to my desktop. We then need to extract the file by right clicking and selecting extract here. Once extracted, open up the folder into the root of the directory. You'll see two PowerShell scripts. This one here will check to see if you have two required modules, which are git and node.js. If your PC doesn't have these modules, the script will go ahead and download both of them. To run the script, right click the file and select run with PowerShell. You'll firstly see a prompt asking you if you want to change the execution policy. Type the letter A and hit enter. This will allow the script to be run as administrator and allow the two modules to be downloaded and installed if they haven't already. I don't have either of these on my PC, so let's speed this part up to the point where we now have both modules installed. With that complete, we can now run the main PowerShell script. Again, just right click the file, select run with PowerShell, and the first prompt will be the same as before to allow the script to be run as administrator. The first thing the script will do is install the Ask CLI module. This module allows us to create an Alexa skill in our Alexa developer environment via a command line interface. As mentioned before, this means we won't have to navigate the tricky user interface of the developer console. Instead, we just answer a few questions on the script, which will be specific to our home assistant setup, and everything will be done for us automatically in the background. Once it's installed, hit enter to continue. The first action will be to link our Alexa dev account with this Ask CLI module. Your browser should open asking you to log in with your Alexa developer account. Once you've done that, hit sign in and then click on allow. You can then close the browser and return back to the PowerShell window. The next prompt asks if you want to link your AWS account. We can type N for no and hit enter. Our skill is going to be hosted on the Alexa dev environment. Next is the modeling stack for the skill. Make sure the interaction model is selected using your arrow keys and hit enter. Our skill is going to be using Python code, so highlight Python using the arrow keys and press enter. The skill, as mentioned, will be hosted on the Alexa dev environment, so press enter on the top option. For this next prompt, it doesn't matter which option you choose, so you can just hit enter to continue. Next, we need to give the skill a name. 
Either leave it as a default option or give it a name of your choice and then hit enter. The next prompt is for the skill folder name which will be on your PC. Just leave it as a default and press enter. Give the script a minute or two. What's happening now is the skill is being created in your Alexa development environment. Once that's complete, the skill will then be cloned or downloaded to your PC. From there, we can modify the skill so it's specific to our home assistant setup. And then the skill will be re-uploaded back to the developer environment ready to use. So the first modification prompt is to enter our home assistant external URL. So for example, mine is hasassistant.xyz, then press enter. We'll now need our long-lived access token we got earlier from Home Assistant. To paste the token in, just right-click on the window and hit Enter. Assuming your Home Assistant URL has a valid SSL certificate, type the letter Y for Yes and hit Enter. Here you need to choose the language your Echo is currently using. Mine is set up for English UK, so I'll type in the number 5 and press Enter. This will now make the relevant changes to your skill and re-upload the skill to your Alexa dev environment using the Git module. This will take a minute or two. Once that's done, PowerShell will close and you should now see three new files generated in the root of the directory. One will be configuration.txt. This contains YAML code for your Home Assistant's configuration.yaml file and it's used to create a new input text entity. There's also a scripts.txt file. This will be used for your scripts.yaml file and Home Assistant. The third is intent edition, which I'll cover later in this video. Firstly, let's open the configuration.txt file. All I need to do here is copy the YAML code and paste it into my configuration.yaml file. I've already got the input text defined in my configuration.yaml file, so I'll be copying everything other than the top line. Open up Home Assistant and go into your File Editor add-on. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code Editor. Open the configuration.yaml file and paste in the code. Next, open up the scripts.txt file. This contains a script which will allow us to communicate with our new Alexa skill. The previous PowerShell script we ran grabbed the Alexa skill ID for us and put it into a script. All we need to do again is copy everything, go to Home System File Editor and add a new line in the scripts.yaml file, then paste in this new script. Once both of those chunks of code have been added, we need to restart Home Assistant via the Developer Tools page. Once Home Assistant is back online, we can now test out the Alexa skill using a Home Assistant automation. I've got two examples here. I'll have the YAML code for each posted in the description below. I'll leave the trigger section blank so you can adjust it as you please. The first action will be a query or question from Alexa. You can write this query in the text section. Then you'll just need to complete the entity ID for your Alexa device below. For this example, I'll be using my Loft Echo, so the media player will be media underscore player dot Loft Echo. The next action tells the automation to wait until it receives a response. In this case, it's waiting for a yes response. You don't need to change anything here. And the final section will be what action you want to happen when a yes response is received. So on this automation, Alexa will ask if I want to turn the light on. If I respond with yes, the light will be turned on. All I need to do here is choose what light I want turning on. Once that's all done, I can hit save and try out this automation by going to the three dots on the top right of the screen and hitting run. This is what it sounds like. Would you like to turn your office light on? Yes. Okay. So nice and simple, after answering yes, the light in my office turned on. For the second example, I'm going to have Alexa ask what radio station do I want to listen to? So it's an open-ended question which will require more than a yes or no response. Again, for the template I'll be providing you, just use a text section to define the question you want Alexa to initially ask and then enter your media player entity ID on the bottom. The next action is to tell the automation to wait for our response. This time we're using response select which means it needs to be a select option we have baked into our Alexa skill. More on that later. And the last action is going to tell Alexa to play something. So just like you would with your voice, we start the command with play, then following that will be the response we gave in the previous action. This might sound confusing, but it's going to make more sense when you hear the demo. So let's hit save, then on the top right, to try out the automation, just hit run. What radio station would you like to listen to? Planet Rock. You selected Planet Rock. 
So what this means is I have a response option baked into my Alexa skill named Planet Rock. You can be as creative as you want with these responses and in a moment I'll show you how you can easily add in these custom responses using the Intent Edition PowerShell script. But first, let's hear what it sounds like if we respond with an option that we haven't yet added to our Alexa skill. What radio station would you like to listen to? Classic FM. Sorry, I did not catch that. What radio station would you like to listen to? So responding with an unknown option won't work until we add it to our Alexa skill, so let's go ahead and do that now. Back in the root directory, right click on the Intent Edition file and run with PowerShell. Again, type the letter A and hit enter to run this script as administrator. It's then going to prompt you for a new selection value. I'll add a couple here which will work with my radio station automation. After entering the first one, it will ask you do you want to add another? So I'll type Y for yes and hit enter. The second one will be Classic FM, which if you remember, failed on the last automation attempt. I don't want to add any more, so I'll type N for no, hit enter. This will then push these additions to our skill using get. Once it's done, hit enter to exit, but be aware you need to wait a minute or so for the changes to take effect. Also, I notice you might need to restart Home Assistant the next time you try this automation since adding new additions to your skill. So let's go back to the last automation which failed and hear what it sounds like this time around. What radio station would you like to listen to? Classic FM. You selected Classic FM. As expected this time round it worked just fine. That's it for this video, if you found this video helpful in any way leave a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so to stay up to date with all my latest content.